Trucker Dave here, and today we're bringing the base. There's quite a few tools you're going to need before you start your job. You're going to need pliers, crimpers, fittings, and extra wire. And I went to Walmart today and I found all those things. This is a do it yourself stereo kit, so I can put one of these new radios in my truck. This is a pretty good beginner's kit. It has everything you'll need to get started going, and it was about $17 plus tax at Walmart. It's got the crimpers, the test light, a little screwdriver, and a trim removal tool, which is essential. We also bought 100 feet of wire, and then when I was in my back room, found another 100 feet of wire because I don't remember anything. We had some splice connectors. I bought two different kinds because I wasn't qu quite sure which size I would need. So I bought two sizes. I bought a removal tool so I could take the stereo in and out if I have to because the stereo has little hooks and it holds into the dash. And the adapter plug. This is vital because this is going to make your job and your life much, much easier. The stereo's got more and more advanced. People wanted more and more features. The equalizers were slowly built in. So were the amplifiers and the hookups. And we got RCA cables and amps. And a lot of stereos now are preamped in the stereo. So you don't even need a booster anymore. You're pushing out 200 watts right out of a stereo when you used to be pushing out 50. You remember that? You had 50 watts per channel. That was a big deal back in the 90s. And then came satellite radio. This was the first innovation. Of course, this wasn't a radio. This was a receiver that plugged into your radio. But soon enough, your radios became equipped with XM radio and Sirius. This is an old unit. It actually still works. I could hook it up tomorrow if I wanted to, but I have it built into several things I own. Mainly out in the semi-truck, it's just built into the truck because that's just easier. And I own the truck, so I can take the radio with me. But with this, after these started getting built in, you started getting more and more things like Bluetooth, CDs. Well, CDs and Bluetooth. Then came the USB cables, the auxiliary ports. And eventually, you got stereos where you can actually have built-in MP3 players that play MP3, CD-ROM. They do the whole schmear. And we'll get to those, too, because this is actually a very high-dollar radio with Bluetooth in it. I got it from the pawn shop because they know me there. Well, you ask, what about the days before adapter plugs? We're going to get to that right now. Today we are set up in my living room and we are covering everything from old school to XM radio to new school to, well, stock and everything in between. And I'm going to show you the differences and how you can hook up any one of these in any vehicle you own. In the pre-dawn days before stereos really got popular, this is what people had. This is a stock unit out of a 1977 Olds Cutlass Supreme. It's the one out of that my trusty Rusty in the back. And this is all that was to it. Four speaker wires. It grounded through the antenna and a power wire. That's all you needed to get some really cool tunes out. And it's actually a fairly nice stereo setup for the car, but it did have an 8-track player. All it had was AM and FM and five presets. But I did have this neat balance. But, yeah. No, I, I took it out and put a super tuner in because this thing actually really sucked. It's a common misconception that stereos are car-specific. What a lot of people don't realize is that a Ford stereo and a Chevy stereo are a lot of times built by the same companies. Blaup Hunt, uh, Delphi, they all make a lot of stereos. My Peterbilt stereo is made by Delphi, which is the exact same stereo that's in a Volkswagen and an Audi. So, all that aside, if you have a wiring harness, you can actually hook a stereo from any car into any other car. It's really quite that easy. I used to have a square face stock Ford stereo out of a Thunderbird that was in a Dodge pickup and I also had it in a Chevy pickup because I had the wiring I understood how to hook it up and actually the Ford Squareface was probably one of the best stock radios ever made 
I've still got several of them in the back and I tried to find one but it's buried behind years of just years of closet stuff it's it's buried I can't I'm I i I might die trying to get to it and the Sherpa's off so we'll have to bypass that so what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna hook this Krako stereo up and I'm gonna show you the basics before we get to the easy stuff because actually if you know how to hook up a stereo which is relatively easy just a couple of wires and I'll show you how to find which speaker goes where you can actually hook up any stereo in any car with ease as long as you have the right equipment and the know-how and that's why I'm here if you were a child of the 80s or 90s you undoubtedly had one of these at least once either that or its sister the Sparkomatic. this was the next gen of car stereos well actually it was the next gen after the next gen the first gen didn't have digital but this is pretty much the same thing this is a Craco it's got a built-in equalizer presets AM FM high stereo or mono time equalizer nice tape deck with auto reverse and it got a little more complicated on the back you had more power wires a power antenna but you still had all the same grounds powers constant ground and and uh, speaker hookups that you always had but what was nice was you could actually wire it up and plug it in later because this thing will come apart so I've been going through these wires. I had to Google a few things because there was not an instruction manual with this. And I'm grateful for Google because in the old days I would have had to call, make phone calls, go down to a stereo shop, and find someone who actually knew something. So apparently, the yellow is the constant power. You have your regular power, your ground, and these other wires are all, uh, well, they said the gray one is for the stereo illumination, which means it comes on with, but I don't see that because, well, they really weren't all that fancy then. These are all just speaker wires, really. So you got the ground, the power, you got the constant power, you got your antenna. So what we're gonna do is get our power source over here and I'm gonna hook up the power and we'll see if we can't get this thing to fire off once we get the power to it then we can start hooking the speakers up and I'll show you how to figure out which wire goes to which speaker Not today. we're gonna hook up the power to a battery charger which should do the trick I don't know what happened to my other stuff that I could actually do it inside because well it's probably buried in the back room too so I got my power unit I got my Krako stereo I got red milling around over there and we're going to go ahead and we're going to hook the uh, stereo up to the power and so we're going to see if we can get power to this first and once we get power to it then we will go ahead and start hooking up the speakers and I'll show you how to use the stereo settings to figure out which wires which. All right we hooked the power in the ground up and we have colors so now let's see what happens when we try to hook a stereo up to it or the speakers yeah those things like that let's do that because there's no antenna hooked up to this and I don't have one I'm gonna try the tape deck if the tape deck doesn't work it's going to eat a classic Sammy Hagar tape I found this in a box of mixtapes yes I am that old so I really don't care if this gets lost. I, I my mixtapes mean more than this because well I'm sorry, I this just sucks. But it'll work to see if the speakers work. So if it works, great. If it gets eaten, I guess we'll be off to other things. Apparently this tape deck has had other plans, so I'll see what I can do to get the radio going, but this is actually making me laugh because it doesn't like Sammy Hagar either. So we got the base cannon hooked up so everything's set on neutral now so now if you want to figure out which wire this is hooked up to you turn it all the way to the left for left side so it's a right side all the way to the right 
front and back. So, this is the right rear. So you would, that's how you do it on these. And apparently it does work. I can't seem to figure this out, but it's kind of pretty. I suppose with an actual, this is AM radio right now. And the neat thing is, on the top here, you can actually dial it in really tight with these old stereos. You can adjust the trim, which means you can really get some distance for these. Let's see if this works because, well, I'm a sucker for punishment. Absolutely not. Well, nobody likes Sammy Hagar anyways. They don't like the cover either. All right, so we figured that out. We're not going to bother hooking all of these up because you kind of figured that out. These are actually going to go in my uh, old 78. I was going to put them in tonight, but I have to run an errand tonight to go pick up some parts. So I'm showing you the basics on the table, and we're going to get to some fancier stuff and some newer stuff right now. Here's the interesting thing about newer stereos is that not a whole lot's really changed in regards to the wiring. There's a few more wires for little things that you might need, and maybe a couple of RCA plugins, like here. This is a dual, it's a fairly cheap brand, it's a CD player. I had it in my semi, my old semi, while I, uh, I was waiting on a new radio, and this didn't last. I thought it was a piece of junk. And I wanted something with XM radio in it, so I got a new one. But it did its purpose, and it'll find its way into something else soon enough. But like I said, if you look at the wiring, the wiring is all actually pretty the same as the old one. I'll show. If you check out the schematics, it's all pretty much the same. Yellow is the constant. You have the red. You have the black power. You have the blue, which is, this is actually for a power antenna. And then you have all your speaker wires. And the interesting thing about this that makes this different is it's got the same color, but it's internally grounded. So you have like the gray and black and the gray. The gray is the positive for the speaker and the gray and black is the negative for the speaker. It doesn't all ground to a common negative which is interesting in some ways. I, it's just a different way of doing things. It doesn't make it any worse or better. On the old car stereos, like the original one that I showed you, all the speakers were internally grounded. That's why there were only four uh, speaker wires. But now there's double the speaker wires because it's all grounded through the radio. And if you come over here to the schematic, it's pretty easy. It shows you which color and where they all go. So let's show you. We'll have this hooked up in just a second. This setup is a little different than the old one in the fact that the constant power also has to be hooked up at the same time as the standard power. Some radios, a lot of times, you will just twist them together. Of course, when you do that, you don't ever get any station presets because, well, it won't hold if you shut the car off because you don't have a constant power hooked up. The old stereo had constant power, but it did not require it to be hooked up. This one does. So you have to remember that the yellow has to be hooked up basically directly to the battery or through a constant power in the fuse box. And the red one gets hooked up through the radio fuse and the black is still just a ground. So let's put a CB CD in and see what happens. I have chosen a Molly Hatchet CD because I saw them in concert and they are the second ba best band ever. So yeah. Okay, so it really wasn't much louder. I forgot how cheap this stereo actually is. So, now that you have the basics on how to hook up an old school stereo, we're going to show you how to hook up a new stool stereo using the existing wire and adapter plugs. And we will negate all of this. This is just reference if you have an old car or you want to hook something up externally. Now, let's show you how it's done now. On a lot of those old radios, like you heard on that one, you heard some humming. Well, that was my power unit, and the battery and the power source along with the alternator will create a humming and a resonance throughout the stereo system. That was solved with uh, one of these little boxes, and the power goes through there. It filters all the humming out before it goes into your radio, and you get a good crisp sound. If you have humming, 
you can actually buy one of these. I forgot the actual technical name for them because I'm just me. And But it's got a power and the negative both go through it. It filters all the excess noise out, the electrical noise out, and doesn't run it back through your speakers like you just heard here. So these are the things that we are going to need when we get ready to put the stereo in the pickup truck. This is the Pioneer stereo that I bought a while back. I got it on sale, imagine that. The car stereo tool kit that we bought that have everything we need. The right adapter plug so we can hook the stereo up to the truck directly without splicing any wires. And then our shrink to fit connectors. These are all heat shrink. And since I don't have a gun, I have my rolls and all in my Zippo. And I'll show you how to do that and hopefully you won't catch the house on fire either. So I got the adapter plug out. Actually, the only one we're going to actually use is this. They don't make individual plugs anymore. It's all a one size fits all. So this is for like an F series and this is for a Mustang and this is for a something else and whatnot. So, but we'll plug it all in because it'll work. It's just, it's a little daunting, but it doesn't need to be any more daunting than it has to be. And the neat thing is it tells you which wire is which and all you have to do is line that up with your owner's manual right here for the stereo and then after that it'll actually be pretty straightforward so you just pick the first one will be the yellow 12 volt battery constant which will be this one and then I'll have to go here and find out let's see which one's the yellow number 15 and it is yellow also so I'll just take that and I'll hook these up together and put a splice between them and then we'll just have to go from there. So once we get them inserted in here, we take our little crimpers here and it's neat. It shows what color of crimper, yellow, blue, or red, we're dealing with pink. So you just stick it in the slot and squeeze and she crimps now now that it's son of a bitch we'll try that again yep check your work kids So you laughing so now that we got it in we take our Zippo here and we use the flame without burning the house down children to shrink the shrink the connector in these are heat shrink so Yep. It works better with a heat gun. But. And there you have it. Now that wire is solid and you probably ought to let it dry because I put got a little too much heat on it because well. I'm known for doing stuff like that. So, we got the yellow one now and all we have to do is the rest of them. So, I'm gonna shut this off and I'm gonna get that and I'll show you here in a minute because it only takes just a few minutes. So now you see we've hooked all of these up. We got all the speaker wires, we got all the power wires. There's some extra wires here but these go to other things for other vehicles. Like I said, this is a one size fits all so None of these are actually, these are all ground, so we should be okay, but I will end up probably clipping them off and putting a piece of tape on the end to make sure that, that if they're not supposed to ground out on anything, they're not supposed to ground out on. And then we'll uh, plug this end into the stereo and this end into the wiring harness of the truck, and presto, it'll all fire up. 
it's the next day and we decided to take the rest of the night off to do some work i had to pick up a trailer and for my other project and whatnot and it's raining so i'm sitting here in my driveway in the truck but i'm going to show you how to install that stereo we wired up yesterday and the ins and outs of it so here we go one of the first things you have to do is remove this trim ring around here that's why we have this trim removal tool that's still in the box uh, the trim ring around should just pop out with the right well this is kind of broken but you get the trim removal tool and this just pops off <coughs> and the radios still in there and that's why we bought this because this right here so uh, gives us the tools we need to go ahead and pop the uh, radio out there are two different kinds of tools you work with when you're taking the radios out. You can either have these flat knife ones or you have the two prongs. The two prongs are definitely the more popular, but these are also popular too. These are the ones we're going to be using. So you just stick them on the slot on the side like this and they should hook. They should hook but and basically the radio is supposed to come out or maybe I had them upside down who knows but Well, give me a minute and I'll figure out a way to break this successfully. Okay, after a little prodding, we got the stereo out. I got this out, I got this out. This is the old piece. You can see where it clipped in here. And those little pieces, what basically they slide in there and they push these, these retaining clips out, which hold the stereo in right here. So, this is the old stereo. It's got the factory plug right here and the antenna. Neat thing is, it's the same plug that we just rewired. So we're gonna put this aside and we're gonna get our new thingy out. So we're basically gonna put this back in but this is actually broken and it's not holding the stereo in these the clips broke so I need to go and check out and see what we need and just go from there we're gonna pull out the uh, and there's a there's a correction manual in here which is good so we sit here and we figure out what we need we're gonna be doing the truck Mm, F series pickup page five. So we'll go over to page five and F series, F series. Yeah. So it tells us what we need right here, and it'll show you what the panel looks like and what we need to uh, take out or put up. So that's how that works so let's get the pieces out and we'll start putting this together according to the directions I've got to take these things off it but that should be all I have to take off you sit here and it says to, uh, take off the you need the B mountings that's all you need for this particular model it says take the yeah cut off it says use b mounting tabs for top and bottom cut off the remaining tabs and discard so 
these are all model. It says B right here. These are the C's. These are the A's. So I got to take these off. Got to take these off. And got to take these off and these off and just leave the B's. So that ought to work. And then we'll put the frame inside here in a minute. Here's where it gets interesting. When this goes into this, you have to make sure it mounts tightly, but also you have to figure out which tab is where because you're going to have to bend these tabs up with a screwdriver or a pocket knife or something like that. I'm going to use my pocket knife because that's what I got. And I haven't cut myself since yesterday. You have to sit there and just pry these up because these are stoppers. These will stop the this plate from moving. And there's several different places you can pull them up. And they actually, they serve, a, they serve a very real purpose. They keep this thing set tight against the, uh, it, it's just, it tightens it up. So you just pop them up in several different places and it gets real firm. And you got them on the bottom too, so you'll have to, you'll have to push them down on the bottom also. Now that we've got the old wiring harness out, you take the plug and you figure out which end is will match up with which, which is the white one, and easy peasy, she just plugs right in. Now, we'll get this ready to go, put this in, and get the mounting brackets all in, but we're going to leave the stereo unhooked until after we do a function check, that way we know that everything is working properly before we get it all mounted in and then have to turn around and take it out if something's not working right. So we have this all securely in. You just pop these little tabs up, but make sure it stays smooth on the inside. And now you run your wiring harness through the hole. Right now. Make sure you get the antenna through here too. And this piece will actually just pop right in. Just. Uh, and it's in and it's tight. So now we have all the wires pulled through here. We take our stereo, plug our stereo in. Yeah, how'd that go? Like that. Hook our antenna up. And we turn the truck on. And we have power. So now that we have power, uh, we're not going to set it up just yet. It's got all different lights and whatnot. I'll just have to, oh, yeah. So now that we got power, we just take the wires, make sure we tuck them safely, being the relative term. We just tuck them safely behind the dash. And it might take you one or two shots to get it back because you're gonna have to be, you're gonna be fighting, you know, a wiring harness honestly these universal harnesses aren't the best thing I would like to take the old harness and actually rebuild it and make it actually work now we're almost done we got the stereo in but there's still the trim ring which you remember was the first thing we took off and snap snap and snap she goes right back on and voila, we're done. I mean, stereo's installed. And it's just that easy. Well, there's some work to it, but stereo's installed. I don't have, I know, do I have a CD in here? Yes, the Essential Hard Rock Hits, which actually is not all that essential. And Boston. Let's put some Boston in and see what happens. Turn on, you. All right. So now we get to test the speakers. That's junk. And everything works great. 
I got power on both sides and both speakers and it's doing everything I want it to do right now, so outstanding. Well, I hope that video was informative. I didn't get as deep as I normally do. I, there's a lot of information there, but it's all pretty easy stuff. And I hope in the future this helps you when you want to put in a stereo in your vehicle. If it's an aftermarket, whether it's an old car or a new car, just remember it's not as hard as everybody wants to make it out to be. So just take your time, read the directions, and don't get caught up with brand loyalty. A lot of times, like I said, the stereos are independent units. Well, the older ones are. The newer ones kind of tie in with the car computer depending on what kind of systems. But on a general whole, an aftermarket stereo or even an older car stereo, any stereo will fit in any car. So just take your time, read the directions, and get it done. I mean, you can have a lot of fun, and there's a lot of information out there, and there's a lot of good stereos out there. So have fun, and thanks for watching.